This is the Pocket Beagle. It's an open source, single board computer made by the BeagleBoard.org Foundation. This chip in the center, the brains of the board, and actually most of the board's functionality, is an Octavo OSD3358. It packs a 32 bit, 1 gigahertz ARM processor, 512 megabytes of RAM, and two additional 32 bit microcontrollers known as PRUs, or Programmable Real-Time Units, both running at 200 MHz. The rest of the board contains microSD, microUSB, and 72 through-hole expansion pins, allowing for a wide range of I.O. and power options. One thing I really like is that the pins are all labeled on the back, so you don't have to constantly check a diagram to remember which pin does what. A quick look at the labels reveals several interesting features, including pulse width modulation, I square C, SPI, UART, and even analog input pins. That means that you don't need additional circuitry to work with analog devices. This is a feature that's missing on many single board computers, including the Raspberry Pi, so it's nice to see those here. And naturally, there are several general purpose digital I.O. pins scattered throughout, in addition to power, input, output, and voltage reference pins. Getting started on the Pocket Beagle is incredibly simple. After downloading and copying a custom Linux image to an SD card, you can plug the board straight into your computer. Once it boots, it'll show up as a USB device and also a network device. In fact, it runs a small web server so that you can open up your browser and immediately start interacting with the board. And by interact, I mean you can literally write and run programs straight from your browser without needing any other software. The custom Linux image comes pre-installed with a web-based IDE named Cloud9, and it starts serving automatically. There are also several example programs loaded onto it that you can run right away, or reference while writing your own code, which I found very helpful. Before I had any idea what I was doing, I was able to flash the onboard LEDs using one of the example programs as a reference. After that, I was able to write a small Python script to animate this LED matrix using I square C. Here, I'm using a photo resistor to control a servo based on the brightness. This is where those analog input pins really simplify things because I don't have to worry about doing the analog to digital conversion myself. The board does it for me. Here's something a bit more complex. My phone is sending out its orientation over an HTTP WebSocket connection. And there's some Node.js code listening for those updates and then adjusting the servo. This allows me to physically control the servo just by rotating my phone. Since the Pocket Beagle is running a variation of Debian Linux, I have access to all of the languages and libraries I'm familiar with. This makes it much easier to build complex systems compared to having to implement everything on a smaller microcontroller. But occasionally, you need to run your code on a more deterministic system. Say you're controlling a really precise robot, like a 3D printer, quadcopter, or a robotic arm. These are situations where timing can be critical, and you can't be bothered with the overhead of a Linux kernel that's constantly multitasking and interrupting things. Here's where those PRUs I mentioned earlier really shine. Those microcontrollers aren't subject to the whims of the Linux kernel, meaning that your code will always run uninterrupted in exactly the same amount of time every time you run it. This feature really sets the Pocket Beagle apart from other Linux boards, and makes it much more capable of precision electronics. The Pocket Beagle costs about $25, which I think is a great deal, especially considering those real-time units and the analog inputs. Anyway, I just thought these boards were really cool. 
all of the people from that community I've met so far have been great people. And if you stay tuned, you'll definitely see this board being used in some of my upcoming projects. If you'd like to see the code from any of those little test projects in this video, drop a code down below and I'd be happy to do a quick explanation of those and post the code somewhere. But until next time, bye!